Our next speaker is Petra Posedel Shimovic, co founder in Soliton Analytics. And her topic for today will be classifying the variety of customers' online engagement for churn prediction with a mixed penalty logistic regression. Uh, Petra is an assistant professor at the University of Zagreb. She was a researcher on several scientific projects. And since 2020, she has been a researcher on the Croatian Science Foundation in the project Deep Reinforcement Learning Algorithms. She has published scientific papers in several world, world journals in the field of mathematical statistics, quantitative finance, and economics. Using data to analyze customer behavior can provide effective decision-making tools for preventing customer attrition churn Petra will talk about new predictive analytics of customer churn rate based on a machine learning model. model. Petra, can you come? Thank you for this introduction. I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me and take this opportunity to say that I'm so enthusiastic to be in person after two years of almost nothing <laughs> and uh, that I do find that uh, sharing knowledge and uh, new insights in the field is rather, rather limited uh, without networking of uh, this kind. Congrats to all the possibilities for online conferences, webinars, whatever, but this I do find much, much more insightful and uh, be here with my peers and uh, colleagues. Uh, okay, today, uh, I was thinking how to organize my talk, and finally, I decided that I would like to be, even though it's not my specialty, to be as more informative as possible and as less technical as possible. So I will do my best and hope that I will meet this goal so that... Oh! <laughs> that we... I'm not comfortable <laughs> with this target. Okay, uh, so let's try to see. Uh, the concept of this uh, agenda. In the introduction, we will see that uh, nowadays machine learning uh, outreaches the narrow limits that are defined by artificial intelligence frameworks. Later on, we will see that uh, as regard business, uh, we will uh, get better insights in the important business uh, domains that uh, rely heavily on advanced statistical methods and machine learning to support operational decision making. And uh, through uh, an empirical analysis, we will really see that customer retention management is not an exception. Uh, the maybe most... Uh, insightful but also uh, not so trivial part of uh, any uh, business analytical, um, analytics project is essentially that when doing uh, the such kind of projects you uh, really need to ask the right questions. Namely, uh, if you know the target of your analysis and uh, uh, consequently how to ask the right questions, then you will find out that essentially you need to choose the right concrete metric that will meet your goals. Because without that metrics, even the most sophisticated machine learning model, if it's not, do, if it's not at the right place and in the right time, will not serve much, uh, neither for meeting your uh, goals, neither to uh, give you better insights into uh, your uh, decision-making process. Okay, then uh, I will show you some details. I will see how much I can tell and why I cannot tell uh, a lot of things because it's not ethical so much to tell what you should do <laughs> to support even more gambling. <laughs> But for the research purposes, 
uh, we will see that the real data analysis in the end is not really an issue. At the end of the story, you will always have some data to which you would like to apply your recent advances. Uh, okay, so economics, machine learning, fine. Why only now? We have machine learning at our disposals from a lot of time right now, but the point is that uh, recent technological advances and deception of new machine learning structures coincide ideally. So for a successful machine learning project, you need few things to have, not just a good algorithm, which is of course necessary, but you also need to have a good data and you also need to have relevant features. This is connected with the thing that I said previously, asking the right questions. So if you are not searching at the right place and asking at the right place, maybe uh, the thing is not so good. Uh, okay, G good data, should it be big? Or we can have even have analysis of good quality with a small data set, well, new algorithms like support vector machine, random forest, with some techniques like kernelization, bagging, boosting, whatever, allowed also for the first time applications of machine learning to relatively small data sets. Of course, some of these things that regard uh, machine learning you know, but this is especially important for economics, because in some area of economics, like uh, microeconomics, macroeconomics, you have really small data set at your disposal. It's not like finance, that you can have how much you want, and so, of course, the first applications straight directly went to finance, but nowadays it's very important to have the possibility also to apply successful machine learning projects on small data sets that have their um, in, uh, that have their applications in specific areas of uh, economics. Okay, uh, this, uh, my uh, today talk, is uh, based on um, uh, recent work uh, that, um, where is this? Okay, uh, that uh, is uh, recently uh, accepted for uh, publication and uh, uh, I will try to get uh, as many insights as possible uh, to all the uh, new uh, implemented um, techniques uh, that I used in order to get more insights uh, to support uh, decision making in that context. Okay, looking back, stock returns, prediction, whatever is about uh, predicting and uh, forecasting or classifying, you will probably end up in uh, some machine learning project. And uh, as I said, financial time series, you can, ca you can get as many data as you want, and essentially what you would like to do here is forecasting. Well, uh, today, uh, beside the forecasting, Okay, I have to concentrate where I should look, <laughs> uh, not to just uh, throw slides like this. Uh, in any case, nowadays, even more than forecasting is now casting, especially in periods of crisis when uh, we only hear about what the central banks uh, will do, support monetary politics, now casting, now casting is very, very important because based on now casting, you are trying to infer or of the most, even now, not future uh, GDP or some other key economic indicator. Uh, of course, uh, Bitcoin price is very popular per se, and so also machine learning find its way in uh, forecasting Bitcoin prices, but more importantly, in the wake of the US uh, and the China trade war, uh, machine learning algorithms were used also for using Bitcoin as a, a hedging choice. Uh, here are some 
other applications of machine learning, credit card expenditure, bank liquidity needs, uh, risk estimation, P2P lending market, binary classification problems of any kind. And of course, more recently, reinforcement learning find its uh, well-deserved uh, place uh, of great importance in finance. I'm only recently into the, this kind of machine learning way of doing, which is reinforcement learning, but is uh, projected and forecasted to be a very, very important area of machine learning, especially with its applications in finance, since you know that it originates for uh, completely other issues and purposes. Uh, not to say that uh, all these applications are quite good topics for uh, diploma thesis for good students to try to find in this specific area how to apply some specific machine learning uh, technique, meeting the target of the analysis, asking the right questions, and uh, using a specific metric, the right metric, the concrete metric, in order to solve the business issue in question. Okay. Not only machine learning, I'm a mathematical statistician and I have to say that I get quite upset if you mention to me only machine learning. So when you have to forecast, okay, I have no problem, I need to ask what machine learning is going to say. But also, I would like to stress that it's very, very important and it can be very fruitful to mix the classical empiric empirical econometrical approaches with machine learning. For example, you in order to have a successful even machine learning project, you need to have relevant features and maybe some empirical procedure, statistical uh, advanced analysis may give you uh, the possibility to identify the determinants that you are going uh, further on to use for forecasting the price that you are so interested in. Okay? Uh, so, good approach also nowadays uh, in science, but also in industry, research and development, mixing all the possible knowledge which in this area of data science includes not only machine learning algorithms, but really um, things that we know from econometrics and advanced statistical methods. Okay, now uh, that we know uh, why in business machine learning may be so important, we would like to stress that this is not enough. So you have a tool, but you need to know what to do with that tool. In context to that, we will observe now not forecasting things. We heard a lot about this. We heard also something about classification problems uh, and machine learning dealing with uh, that. But in the context of uh, business, business, uh, business goals, uh, the classification problem is very important because you assign business value to each of the labels that you would like to predict. As I said, this talk is based on the joint work with a professor from a professor of senior data science from CAGE and uh, a computer scientist from Montpellier Business School. Uh, of course, you also need to know that mostly you will have the problem of or classification or regression, but classification is uh, significantly trickier than evaluating a regressions. There are a lot of reasons for that, but the most important we will see uh, here today. Uh, okay, so what is the target of our analysis? We said we first need, okay, we know you're using, using machine learning. Now we need to uh, set a target of our analysis, customer retention management. Uh, in this, um, in CRM, it's very important uh, uh, to churn prediction. So this is the target of our analysis. And also, uh, it's very, very important because nowadays firms are facing uh, tremendous pressures from uh, customers. Uh, the market is uh, saturated and uh, it's much more expensive to acquire a new customer than uh, losing an existing one. So firms are faced with the problem of customer churn and they would like to know how to 
uh, how to identify the customers at risk in order to uh, make some actions and uh, retain uh, their customers. Namely, to uh, avoid the losing customers crisis. Okay. Uh, First of all, so we need to identify the customers that we would like to uh, still be with us. And uh, moreover, this would be not enough, but for future considerations, we would uh, like to uh, find the main reasons that affected or that are affecting customers to churn. Because this is then a specific knowledge of which you can get really a concrete business value. Which measure to choose? Okay, we would like uh, to have uh, our prediction as most uh, accurate as possible, but uh, if the, uh, somehow the marginal profit or loss are not equal dependently if you wrongly classify a churner from not a churner, then accuracy would not be a good measure. Without that knowledge, I can call it like that, or insight, I would tend to say that accuracy would be uh, the first measure to, uh, to target or to choose. Of course, you will never uh, be able to avoid, we heard even in the previous talk, uh, questions about how, how sure you are about the accuracy or precision of your predictions. So uh, we can gain more insights from confusion metrics. Yes, this is also fine. Uh, beside accuracy, you may have more knowledge about uh, uh, some information that you gather from your prediction algorithm. But if uh, you do not care equally about, in the churn uh, prediction case, about true positives or false negative, because each of them have different marginal loss of profit uh, value in your specific case, then you should be very careful when choosing the right performance measure. In this context, since we, in the churn prediction uh, case, you need uh, to have as, uh, as uh, less, uh, so the false negative should be as small as possible here. You care a lot about them, namely about the true positive rates, so having less uh, uh, false negatives as possible. And so in this case, recall of sensitivity is the right metric to address in the context of churn prediction. Of course, there are cases when you would choose or prefer precision with respect to recall because you cannot have it both high. And uh, then in that case, you will focus on a different target. And definitely in the churn prediction case, uh, precision is not the right metric to, to have in this specific context. Okay, regarding the model, regarding the model, what to say about the model in easy words. So uh, we heard some talks about uh, logistic regression as the benchmark for making a classification problem, the classification um, issues and um, uh, making uh, predictions about uh, specific classes. And uh, most of that area focuses on uh, credit risk uh, and identifying uh, clients that are going to get a credit or not or uh, in financial applications. But in any case, it happens when you work with real data uh, that you have so many data at your disposal and mathematically speaking, dense problems are very, very difficult to handle, okay? So you would like, uh, even if you are using a very sophisticated machine learning model, at the end of the day, this model relies on some optimization, and beside that optimization, you have some mathematics, and you, will you would like to have uh, a model that is as sparse as possible. What this means? It means 
that essentially you want to make it as simple as possible, but at the same time to reduce the risk of overfitting. Because I can put inside thousands of features, even if I have the corresponding data to analyze uh, all that features that I would like to incorporate in my decision making, namely decision uh, prediction model. Uh, the problem is uh, that then the problem uh, would make uh, very, uh, very probably good on your training set, but it will not be able to generalize well because you even, with very sophisticated algorithms, you even go to uh, estimate the noise present in the process. So in order to avoid that, you would like to have a model that is as simple as possible, but at the same time, you would like to extract useful information and, reprodu and um, uh, detect reproducible patterns for, uh, from big data set, okay? So, not only to give your prediction, uh, but also to identify the features that are playing the most important role. So, fine. Once I know what is the target, not only to uh, predict the churners or have a warning about who is churning and who is probably not churning, uh, and be as precise as possible dependently on the pr uh, performance measure that I choose, I would also like to identify the feature that are most responsible for that kind of behavior. So two goals and you want to incorporate it in the same model. Of course, if you have just the first goal, you would probably go for a neural network or some deep learning solution. But in cases when you really care about explanation and interpretability, and <laughs> believe me that in business, you need to interpret. Without interpretation, there is no possibility of getting your model in process. Then you would like to have it both. How to have it both? Well, the solution is to use this sparse model, which are structured, the regularization model. And uh, uh, these are models that not only care about the loss function that you have, but also you have some kind of penalty term, which would uh, have uh, the, the, the purpose to uh, reduce all the unnecessary stuff from the model. Okay, so in essentially what this kind of regularization model means, you constrain the model to make it as simple as possible and at the same time to uh, reduce the risk of overfitting. Now, the next problem is fine. Now I know which kind of model I need to, to consider and then I have to choose the loss function and the weighting uh, regularization term and the penalty measure. At the end of the story, the mathematics looks like this. This is not a problem once you have uh, powerful uh, computer, uh, powerful machines. And as I said at the beginning of the uh, lecture, uh, of the talk, we have it. Uh, from recently at our disposal, not only from recently, but let's say uh, it's like this. And the model looks like this. Now you have an optimization problem, which of course I'm not uh, going to talk a lot uh, right now because these are like technical stuff, how we handle the um, minimization of uh, that problem, this optimization problem. But uh, we uh, would like to stress that um, uh, uh, we proposed a machine learning based algorithm to deal with that optimization problem. And, and this, why also is this so? Because we would like uh, jointly with solving this kind of optimization, we would like to find the corresponding feature importance. Uh, so, essentially, we are searching in general, not only for this case, but this is a, 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 a note to take. You are searching for models that are capable to reconcile the strong predictive performance with interpretability. And these kind of prediction models uh, should do that. 
Okay, uh, so the main step of the proposed algorithm, you train, you test, uh, you find the optimal parameter values, and once you do that, you try to get insights from the concrete business problem. We do that uh, from a data set taken for Catrick Sports Group, uh, gaming operations across Europe, uh, providing both B2B and uh, B2C services, and uh, we split the analysis in three parts in order to emphasize how important it is this uh, regularization weight lambda present in the penalty part, okay? Once we do that, we uh, check the robustness of our procedure, doing some simulation analysis, uh, namely using uh, bootstrapping, uh, specifically uh, made in order to meet the goals of the target of our business analysis that we encounter. And here, just to say that Everything of this would, would uh, work pretty fine if you have balanced data set. Another problem of classification problems is that very often, almost always, you will have unbalanced data set. So you need not only to have a good machine learning algorithm, the best possible, but also to inside that algorithm you need to handle uh, the problem of unbalanced data set and try to uh, make it work knowing that this algorithm has to be modified in order, in order to meet the properties of the data that you are working with. As you can see, the positive rate here is a minority rate, and this is often a big business problem for applications of machine learning. Uh, to make the story short, what is very important here is that if you do not care about the, analysis, uh, the target of your analysis, and if you do not choose the concrete metric that would respond to your rightly asked questions, then the analysis would be completely different. So if you take accuracy as, you me as a measure, performance measure that you care about, the nice, fancy machine learning algorithm will give you some features that are completely irrelevant if your metric to target is, for example, recall. You can see this from here, just that the, uh, the, 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 the right size is without penalization. So not only to say that if you do not use a sparse model, also you will have the same problem without penalization of specific features, namely surplus information, as we would like to call it, you will have, at the end of the day, think features that you find that you that your algorithm find that are very important, but when you take care about the sparsity part, the, the risk of under, uh, overfitting, then you would have, at the end of the day, completely different features to tell the management of the firm to focus on. So, not only yes penalty, no penalty, but also you have to be very careful that even with one specific performance measure, you would also focus on one specific feature, group of specific features and on the other, uh, which are the specific features that you need to tell, focus on them if you want people to be more present on your gaming platform. But on the, uh, on the other hand, you have to be careful that the data at the end is just, uh, just some numbers, but you be in economics, in business, you need to be very careful about the output that you are getting. I don't want to say garbage in, garbage out. This is nothing garbage. Neither the no penalty case, neither the penalization case. This, this, it's not that one is better than the other. It very much depends what is the target of your business analysis and what are the questions to which you would like to find the answers. 
Of course, what is very important, just a minute and I'm done, that essentially in these kind of problems, you need to also take information about customers that are timely dependent, okay? That you do not use just static variables. So we make it here in order, uh, in a way that we, uh, uh, we have an aggregation procedure that we used in order to uh, make it possible to use the uh, recency, frequency, and monetary value of uh, our customers' data. Of course, as any research would not be any kind of research, so it cannot be even Im improved even further. So there are also issues uh, here on which you would like to work before uh, saying that in this specific problem when you do consulting, then you at the end of the day you need to say what somebody needs to do right now in order to solve this specific kind of problem. Well, I would always go for the way that there is no single solution. It very much depends on the circumstances. It very much depends what is your real or most priority target that you, are, that you would like to focus in a specific period of time. Okay, and of course, maybe we will not change the world with the data, but uh, for sure, we, from this kind of analysis, not this, but all the analysis and talks that we he um, heard so far here at this conference, there are uh, for sure some key uh, takeaways, takeaways that I already uh, said uh, about uh, that can be taken in consideration in order to uh, improve even further any kind of analysis that you are uh, dealing with. Thank you. Thank you, Petra. Thank you. Certificate of Appreciation wow. for you. <laughs> Thank you. Now, uh, our golden sponsor, Koyas.